to us this morning. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, those needing our prayers, uh, let's continue to be praying for Brenda Arce, uh, for she's still in the hospital getting tests run, so continue to be praying for her. Let's continue to be praying for uh, Johnny and Huey as well. I um, have a card here to read. It says, Darrow Villa Church family, thank you so much for all your love and support during this difficult time. The calls, texts, cards, and prayers mean so much. Thank you for the food and donations to Foster's in my dad's name. We love you so much, Kim, Norm, Kitty, and family. Please continue to be praying for them in this sudden loss and continue to seek out ways to encourage that family during this time. Just a few more announcements this morning. Um, we are having a fellowship luncheon next Sunday morning after we are dismissed. The menu is soup and salad. Uh, see the sign-up sheet for what to bring back there in the foyer. Uh, Stephen Atkins is going to be taking pictures today for the new directory and the cradle roll class once um, services are dismissed this morning. So if you have not had your picture taken, please head back to the cradle roll class and get that done today. Um, May 7th, uh, May 7th is going to be our Mission Sunday this year, so be praying about that. Uh, our goal will be to raise $12,000 for missions. Uh, that will help us through the rest of this year um, and help with programs and things. Last year, y'all's contributions uh, blessed so many people, as we have discussed, uh, from, um, from retreats to camp uh, to helping Franco continue to do his work. So. Um, helping uh, the Romanians. Um, so please um, put that on your calendar. May 7th, we will have Mission Sunday with more details to come. Uh, we will also, some of you have been asking, we will be doing the cans again this year uh, for camp for Vacation Bible School. Um, this is the 30th anniversary of Moments on the Mountain Kids Camp in Italy. Uh, the goal is, is we're only going to charge $30 per student to be able to come this year and raise enough to be able to offset the rest of the cost. So, and, uh, so just be aware of that, and cans will be distributed soon for the camp that this church uh, has blessed in so many ways throughout the years. If the Lord gives us to Wednesday, come back and be with us Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Sound good? I'm back at 7 o'clock Wednesday night for services. Uh, let's enjoy our morning of worship together and being together as a family. Um, let's take time, continue time to fellowship with one another. Uh, take time to pray with one another, love on each other this morning. Uh, let's not take this moment for granted. Uh, for this is the day the Lord has made. And let's rejoice and be glad in it. John 15 verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I am I in him, he is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen? Let's pray. God, what a, what a blessing it is to be here this morning as a family. Um, what a blessing it is to be able to come here and just worship your holy name, Father. I pray that all of our hearts and our minds are set on you right now. And uh, that we have come ready to, uh, to receive what you have for us this morning, Lord, and for us to give back to you in abundance, Lord, this morning. God, we have many who are in need, uh, many who need prayers. Uh, we have many who are having health struggles. Um, we have some who are having spiritual struggles, Father. We, we lift all those up to you, Father. Um, we pray for Brenda right now 
uh, and the health struggles that she is having, Father. And pray that the doctors will be able to determine what is going on with her and that um, she will be blessed with good health again, Father, that they will know exactly what to do and how to help her out, Father, and that you are just there to comfort her, to guide her, Lord, um, love on her, Lord, and uh, uh, be with her spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, Father, during this time. Um, watch over her, Lord, and be with Katrina and uh, the rest of the family, Lord, as they, as they help Brenda during this time. God, we continue to pray for Johnny and Huey and their health. Uh, thank you for the ways that you're walking with them currently and pray that you will just continue to be with them, Father. <clears throat> Lord, continue to be with uh, Kim and Norm and Kitty and the rest of the family, Lord, during uh, the loss of David. Uh, Lord, we just pray that your hand of comfort, your hand of peace will be on them, Father, um, from now uh, until forever, Father that you will just uh, let them be able to hold on to the wonderful memories and the man that he was, Father, um, and how he sits with you now in heaven, Father, and uh, uh, how, uh, how this is just a momentary goodbye, uh, but there's an eternity to be together forever, Lord. So be with them and give them comfort and strength and peace during this time, Father. And thank you for walking with them the way that you have uh, since this loss. God, uh, life is short. Um, it's cliche to say it, but it's the truth. I just pray, Lord, uh, I just pray for all of us in here right now uh, that we'll realize the significance of the breath that we take in this moment and that we don't get this moment back. Um, this is the moment you've given to us. And I pray that as we worship you and as we fellowship with each other this morning, Lord, we will treat it, Lord, as uh, you want us to. And that we will, uh, uh, we will love big this morning. And we will worship big. And Lord, we will not take for granted uh, the time that we share together. And the time that we get to worship you, Father. Um, what, what greater thing is there to do in this, in this world, Lord, than to worship you, the creator of everything? And so uh, I pray that we're ready to do that. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for always walking with us and being with us, Lord. Uh, may, we always, uh, may we always invite you to be hand in hand with us, Lord, and not keep you at a distance. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Thank you uh, that he goes on our behalf to you daily, Father, to, to share with you um, what is going on in our lives. And thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father, that guides us in this life, that walks with us and, uh, and is ready to help us and um, show us where you want us to go every single day, Father. Thank you for the Spirit. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray all of these things. Amen. Am I on? Okay, now, okay. We ready to enter into worship? It's a beautiful day. As Caleb said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will do what? We will rejoice and be glad in it. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for her words. Too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? 
You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praises do I stand in awe of you. Amen. Be seated. I love watching our worship, especially when you can see the children and how they're entering into worship and how they express themselves. That's an awesome thing. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer, how He loves me, how I love Him. He is risen, He is coming, Lord, come quickly, Alleluia, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. (coughs) 
As Paul would say in Acts chapter 17, speaking to the Athenians, he would say, in him we live and we move and we have our being. In Christ alone, that's where it all comes from. And let's keep that in mind as we sing and make this statement of faith in this song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone who took on flesh, fullness of God in hell, Bless, babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid, here in the death of Christ live. There in the ground His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave He rose again. And as He stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am His And He is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry... Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from His hand till He returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Amen. Amen. That last verse. No guilt in life. No fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. Amen. No guilt. No fear of death. That's about as good as it gets. Right now, Weston's going to come and He's going to read Scripture to us. Amen. Because of Christ, we have our salvation. We can make that statement, no fear of guilt, no fear in death. 
because of what he did on the cross. Here in just a few moments, Stacy's going to come and lead us in taking the Lord's Supper. And let's sing this next song and help get our minds focused on Jesus and what he did on the cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange day for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In that old rugged cross Stained with blood so divine, a wondrous a beauty I see. For twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to burden and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange its <clears throat> for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true it shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me some day to my home far away, where his glory for ever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my 
trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. As we prepare to take the Lord's Supper, I'm going to read some verses out of the New Testament. You could turn to uh, Mark chapter 14. Mark 14, I'm going to start in verse 22. And it says, as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Verse 25, it, very significant verse here, it says, truly, I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine. Until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Jesus lays out the Lord's Supper, the bread, representing his body. The cup, the fruit of the vine, representing his blood. And what he says here in verse 25 is very evident that Jesus is confident that his impeding death will not prevent his celebration with his father. He knows what is happening, following through. Continue here, let's turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 13. This is talking about called to be holy. Verse 13, it says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action, and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written... You shall be holy, for I am holy. We're setting our hope on a future reward. And, and, the, and we fear God. You know, he's redeemed us. And he redeemed us at the cost of his own son. And looking down a little further in, in Peter, going down to, look down at uh, verse 19. It says, but with the precious blood of Christ... Like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. Who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience, to the truth for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. Talks about perishable and unperishable seed. This is something that's unperishable. The gift of Christ will never fade away. It will never go away. It is forever. Born again through Christ, the unperishable seed. 
Let us pray for the, for the bread. Heavenly Father, we come to you so humble. We're receiving a gift that from human standards we don't we don't really deserve. We've done things in the world, we've said things. We are not perfect. Although we strive to be like Jesus, we try to do those kind of things. We're so thankful for this time. And we take this bread that represents the broken body of Jesus and we bless it. May we take it in a pleasing manner. In Jesus' name, amen. As you open your little foil packet here, and this is the fruit of the vine. This is the representation of Jesus' blood, the blood that he shed for us. Let us pray. Once again, Heavenly Father, we come to you in awe of this gift, this perfect unblemished Son of God was sacrificed on the cross for us. He did not commit a crime. He did this for us. Endured the pain and the agony of being nailed to that cross. As we take this cup that represents his blood. Let us do it in a manner and pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Separate and aside from this, we are we are commanded to give. We are commanded to give of our time, of our efforts, of our money to help out those that are less fortunate, those that don't have things, so we can create a better world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we come to you thankful for all that we have the roof that we have over our head, the, the cars that we ride and drive in, the food that we have to eat. We know this all comes from you. It's all a blessing from you. Help us to reach out, give of ourselves, give of our time, And what we've been blessed with to help those in need. Let us do it with a cheerful heart. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. What a gift to be able to take the supper together. And remember the sacrifice that he made on the cross. And not only the giving of his life, but how he lived his life as a man. He showed us how we're to live before God in a way that honors him. And because of that knowledge, and because of what he has shared with us on how we can be saved, we can live with great assurance in our lives. This song we haven't sung in a long while, but it has a great message. I hope it encourages us and honors God while we sing it.
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, ring from above. <clears throat> this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. <clears throat> Ness lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's stand while we sing this song, and after we're through singing this song, let's encourage each other by greeting each other and uh, welcoming each other here. <clears throat> he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. He paid that debt at Calvary. He cleansed my soul and set me free. I'm glad that Jesus did all my sins erase. <clears throat> Sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. One day He's coming back for me to live with Him eternally. Won't it be glory to see Him on that day? I then will sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Greet each other.
Thank you. Let's everybody open up our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter four. I think we are all glad to be here. It's a great morning. Several of you, as I was going up the aisle, said, I love Blessed Assurance. I love it too. We haven't sang that song in a long time. Uh, but it was awesome. First Peter chapter 4. We'll get into our reading here in just a moment. <clears throat> First thing I want to say, Rick, you're home. Don't go away, okay? <laughs> Come back. <laughs> it's good to see Rick Jamison here today. I about swallowed my tongue halfway through the singing and thought, Rick, get up here and, and co-lead with me. <laughs> Uh, no, it is good to see you, brother. I'm glad you're here. First Peter chapter 4. We're going to go from chapter 4, read a few verses, go into chapter 5. And then we're going to read a couple of other passages. And we're going to light in James chapter 4. So, before we begin our reading, let's go to God in prayer. Our dear God and Father, we are so grateful to be able to worship you, to be able to enjoy fellowship with each other. Father, we're especially grateful for the moments at the table, to be able to all of us together remember your son, remember the life he lived, the death he died, and the resurrection that he experienced. May those thoughts be with us every minute of every day. May we never forget. And Father, in that remembering, may we be strong and faithful. We ask that you be with us now as we read from your word, and may we be challenged by your word today and by the encouragement that we receive from it. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. First Peter chapter 4, let's begin reading here in verse 7. Peter writes and he says this, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's various grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God. Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now chapter 5, beginning verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. 
And let's begin reading here in verse 8. <coughs> Jesus is speaking and he says, But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And beginning here in verse 1, Paul writes and says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, <coughs> did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that... Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Now we could add to that one more passage. In the Old Testament, Micah chapter 6, verse 8, where Micah writes and says this, He has shown you, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Amen? Now all of these passages, what's the one thought that they had in common? Every one of those passages gets around to talking about Jesus, talking about relationships, and ultimately in that context then, talking about humility. Humility. What do you and I know about humility? Do we ever talk much about humility? Do we ever think about what it is to be humble? Especially in light of what Paul said there in Philippians chapter 2, have this mind among yourselves which you have in Christ Jesus. He didn't consider equality with God something to hold on to, but he did what? He emptied himself. He emptied himself in order to do the will of the Father. Paul says that's the attitude, the mindset you and I must have. Peter would say, if you will empty yourself, if you will humble yourself, what will God do? At the right time, he will exalt you. He will lift you up. And Philippians 2 said, Jesus emptied himself, came and took the form of man, being found a servant. He became obedient unto death, death of the cross. And after he had accomplished that will of God by being humble, God the Father did what? Gave him the name above every name so that at that name every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. 
at the right time, exalted his son. Why is humility so important, a subject in the Word of God? Be turning to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And we'll read here in just a moment. <clears throat> Folks, I apologize for the voice. <clears throat> this morning I got up and everything in here decided to come out here. So, but we're going to get through. <clears throat> I have water, David. Yeah. Humility. Social media. Are they one and the same? Humility, being like Jesus, social media, one and the same? Facebook, the name itself begins to betray what? The attitude that it takes to be on social media. Because the face being talked about, Jesus our Facebook, here's my face showing my book, my life, to all of you. Amen? TikTok, all about Jesus, isn't it? And for all of the me, me, me about Facebook, doesn't even come close to what TikTok's about. And you talk about a tool that is all about me in every aspect of my life. There's TikTok. And then add to that Twitter. And add to that Instagram. And add to that, I couldn't even begin to tell you beyond that while all else is out there. For you and I to get on social media, get on the internet, and do what? Promote myself. Parents, before we go on, if you've given your phone, a smartphone to your children, you've given them a tablet of any kind, you've given them a laptop, they have access to that at school, and at home, how involved are you in your kid's life? Do you know what they do on social media, on their phone, on their tablet, on their laptop? Even whatever goes on at school on the laptop or the tablet they get at school? Say, well, Michael, there's parental guides, there's school guides. These kids, in about two clicks can be completely beyond all that and be exposing themselves to things that would curl your eyelashes. That's a subject for another time. Today, humility. Number one question being asked by so many young people and so many adults today, according to psychologists, People are wanting to know, am I good enough? And most psychologists will say that question being asked by kids and adults alike, it's being asked because almost everyone is on social media and they're comparing the life that they live to what they're seeing the life that other people live on social media. Because the wonderful life that everyone else lives is not the life that I live. So am I good enough? How do I live this life? Well, all you have to do on social media to be good enough with everyone else is lie like most people are lying on social media about their lives. Because the concept behind social media is this. 
Get your life out there so people see your life and people want what you have. And promote yourself, and promote yourself, and promote yourself, and promote yourself. Am I right? Because my Facebook page, I don't promote Irma. I don't promote Debbie. I certainly don't promote Bill. And why in the world would I promote Keith or promote Rodney or Jeff or Sharon or Vicki or Chad? Who do I promote? My Facebook page, who's it about? Oh, it's about Carol and Debbie and Jerry, right? No, me. Me, me, am I right? And then Paul comes along and says, as a child of God, have this mind among yourself, which you have in Christ Jesus, who although he was in the form of God and equal to God, did not consider that something to hold on to, but rather gave that up so that he could become a servant, so that he could become a man like you and I. So that he could come and do what? Point people to the Father. Amen. Humility. The Spirit within us that comes from allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us to be people of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control so that we literally can be Jesus to other people. So that I can look at my brother and sister and say, what can I do to serve you? Because I want you to see Jesus in me. What can I do to show my love for you so that I could go to the cross for you like Jesus went to the cross like you. Amen? Humility. Humility. Not thinking less of myself, where I can enjoy the person that God created, but thinking less of myself in a time frame, putting myself where I can say, I'm going to talk less about me, not I'm less of a person, but I'm going to talk less about me. And focus on my Lord and Savior. Now, why is this so important to you and I? Why is this so important to you and I? That we learn to be humble. And there are a lot of lessons to learn in this, folks. Number one, judgment. Judge not lest you be judged. And we've talked about this how many times? I'm the standard. Do you measure up to my standard? Do you live up to my expectations? Whose expectations are we concerned about, folks? What did Paul say in the Colossian letter? Do everything you do as to the Lord and not to man. If I'm always looking at you, 
and saying, you need to be like me? Why can't you be more like me? Why can't you do what I'm doing? And I constantly find fault. Jesus just looked at the situation and said, what? Father judges. He said, these people need a Savior. I came to save. So much so that I'm going to take all the guilt of their sin on me so that they can have relationship with the Father. So much so that one moment in time, a moment that's never occurred in all of eternity will happen where I have to look at all the darkness just placed on me and I look up to see my Father and He's not there because He's gone away. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's humility. And James would say what here in chapter 4? Beginning verse 4. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is of no purpose that the Scripture says, He yearns jealously over the Spirit that He has made to dwell in us, but He gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord. And what? He will exalt you. And that's a pretty hard passage to swallow, isn't it? You adulterous people. Well, that's not me. Look at my Facebook page. I'm wonderful. I've got it figured out. What do you mean, adulterous people? Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Social media, fraternities, sororities, sports clubs, entertainment, three and four jobs to get ahead. You wish to be that, you wish to do that, and you become friends with the world and you become an enemy with God. And what would keep that from happening? Humble yourself before the Lord and He will exalt you. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Alfreda, I've got a list of how you need to live. I'm going to start telling you how to live and when to live and where to live, okay? And Travis, I'm going to do the same for you. Right? And I can tell you now by the look on Travis's face and Alfreda's face, they're looking at me like, uh-uh, it ain't going to happen. David, Lori, I know how you ought to live. You ought to live the life I'm living. Why aren't you? And Lori's giving me that grin she gives to people. Huh. And Todd and Pam, I know exactly how you two need to live. What you need to do is be right with the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, if you're worth anything, you'll do it. 
Norm, Kim, you ready for your list? Jason, you ready for your list? Steve, Flo, you ready for your list? Lauren, you ready for your list? Rick, you ready for yours? And not seen you in a while. I got a long one for you. Humility. If any man would come after me, let him take inventory of everyone else and tell them what to do and come follow me. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Amen? Humility. Learning how to be gracious with each other. Learning how to find joy in each other. Learning how to sit down over a cup of coffee and be accountable to each other and kind of smile and laugh about the fact that both of us have problems and we're an awful lot alike and we need God's grace together. Humility, a joy in being here today together with everyone else who's like me, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters who I can raise my voice together with and praise Jesus, declare Him Lord. Jesus is Lord. My Redeemer and yours. How He loves me, how He loves you. And He's risen and He's coming. So let's get together and Learn how to be ready when he does. Amen? Humility is what put him on the cross. Humility is what will take me there. To find salvation. And then to get up on the cross with him and say, Lord, you gave your life at one time. I'm willing to lay down my life. For the brothers too. And you talk about an attitude that God's people need to have in their hearts and minds today, folks. All we see in the world, social media gone crazy, leaders trying to lead us, and it's all about pride and arrogance. It's all about pride and arrogance in the education system that we have in our country today. It's all about everyone getting what they want for themselves. And how is that working out for us, folks? And it's not going to work in God's kingdom. And humility is what will cause us to be the church God wants us to be. And I'm talking there about the church everywhere, but also about the church here. Are we ready for this kind of life? Are we ready to be humble and join hands with each other and say we're in this together and whatever he asks, that's what we're going to give. Amen? And the church has to be that so that the world knows what God has in mind for everything out there. I had conversation 
with a brother a couple of weeks ago. I've known this brother a long, long, long time. Nothing good to say about anything. Nothing good to say about his job, his family, how his life was going just within himself. Nothing good to say about his church family. Just nothing good at all. And I asked him, what about Jesus? And he had nothing to say. Nothing to say. And after that, I didn't know what to say. Because when we get to the point where we can't find any good in Jesus... What's happened? Me has gotten in the way. And I have exalted myself and have taken that privilege away from the Father. And He will not accept that self-exalting. Because he's waiting for me to humble myself so that he can exalt me. The invitation song today, I am mine no more. Are we ready to live that out? And when we get ready to do that, when we are doing that, it's amazing how extraordinary life gets. You need to respond to Jesus. Come to the front as we stand and sing. I am mine no more. I am mine no more. I've been part with blood. I am mine no more. Jesus is my Lord, and He rules my life. Jesus is my Lord, He will come again, He will come He will come again, for I am mine no more. I am mine no more. I've been bought with blood. I am mine no more. Be seated, please. Now we got the first part of the lesson today. Keep reading chapter 4 this week. And we'll get to the next part of the lesson next Sunday.
before we do anything else. These last four years, have been some of the hardest that I've ever had to live. And I've tried to walk faithfully, to be the man that God needed me to be and wanted me to be. Tried to serve y'all faithfully. try to do everything I can to honor Christ. And over the last two or three months, I had a lot of discussion with a brother and just have shared with him and talked to him. And I've been so grateful he's been there. I had a conversation with my brother in Boston this last week, and he was encouraging and helped so much. But it's like God has been talking to me and saying, Michael, in all of this, you have tried. I need you to let me try. In the last six months, frustration, discouragement, anger, some bitterness has crowded out my heart. I'm just glad God has let me see that. And I'm just asking this morning for your prayers. I need my family to pray for me. So that I can walk with the Lord and be the man that I need to be, that he needs me to be. And I know he loves me, and I know he forgives. He's already done that, but I just wanted to share my heart with y'all today. Because y'all are my family. You're always in my heart. I just want to love you and serve you in the way God wants me to. So please pray for me. And in my and in my life and your lives, may God be honored. Let me get a cleaner. And just if if one of you would pray. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we humbly bow before your throne at this time, Father, just thanking you for all that you do, Father, for us. We thank you especially for this time that we've had to gather here this morning to worship you, Father, to learn from your word to encourage each other, Father, 
and to gather around the table in remembrance of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to remember his life and his sacrifice on the cross, Father. And we just pray we all remember all that means to us, Father. We thank you and we pray that all we've done here this morning has been done in accordance with your will, Father. We pray that it encourages us, that it strengthens us in your word, and it brings a smile to your face, Father, or it's brought one to ours. And Father, we want to pray now for Michael, Father. He has been a faithful servant of yours for all his life, Father. He has been a servant here with us for over 30 years. He has encouraged so many, including me, and he has brought so many to you, Father. He has been faithful and strong and been there for us, encourage us, and we love him, Father, and we just pray that we can be there for him now, Father. We can let him know what he means to us and let you know, Father. And as we prepare to leave here, Father, we just pray that we all continue to focus on you, Father. that we take every opportunity to serve you, Father, and we never forget you. We ask that you be with us and you watch over and protect us. And we pray that you just forgive us when we fail you, Father, for we know we all do at times. We thank you again. We love you. And we offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen. Dismiss. Right? Amen. Okay.